What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be trying out the Brain Dead Popper. Uh, this is uh, using some uh, new products uh, by Frankenfly. It's called the uh, uh, Dead Body uh, Popper Head, or Poppers. And what it is, is it's a foam popper head cut and design. He recommends using a, a two-aught hook, and so we got an A-Rex TP615 in the vise in the size two-aught. We're gonna be using some Semperfly. This is a six-aught in white. Um, I've often used red or orange for tying my popper heads, but for this I'm going to recommend white and uh, I'll tell you why here in a minute. So we're going to start our thread right here behind the hook eye and lay down uh, non-touching wraps because I want to provide a little bit of gripping um, subsurface here for the, uh, p the, the popper hair to, head to adhere to the shank and the, uh, the thread. And so I'll just um, use some spacing wraps and then advance my thread all the way back to the bend. And then, of course, we're going to now prepare our proper head. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. I've tried the heating the bodkin um, needles and a few other things, pointed alls. Um, and I just grabbed my bodkin here, and I'm going to puncture it in the lower center because I want it to ride a little bit lower in the water. If you want to ride higher, there's articles and such on how to angle this on what your desired feature is. Um, but I'm going to angle it just like how I would a traditional popper head, and we're going to insert that bodkin all the way. So that way... Um, the uh, tip of the bodkin is of course uh, smaller in diameter than the base here and so that's why I'm kind of stretching that foam out, uh, puncturing it and then I'll go ahead and test it because this A-Rex hook has quite a, quite a hook eye on it and so I just want to make sure I can get it over snugly when we glue it there will be a little bit more uh, lubrication and so that fits on nice and I'm going to leave a, about a half an eye length there of space between the head and the eye. I like to build up a little bit of thread um, for the potential of this uh, any popper head coming off and so I'll go ahead and mark this with just a pen uh, that way I know where uh, my stopping point is and then a little easy trick and this is why I use the white thread I'll take a red sharpie and just kind of color that thread up to the hook eye and that way I know as soon as I enter the red area that's going to be covered by the popper um, foam material so um, a little tip there if you're going to be you know non prepping these in advance and for this uh, I think it's best to just tie it and then insert the head and For the body of the fly and the tail. We're going to start with the tail. I'm using some of this nature spirit uh, uh, Fish hunter marabou and sculpin olive. Um, I love using olives whites and blacks uh, uh, For these poppers and so I'm going to go ahead and trim out the tip here and we'll uh, You know get the stem out and that's uh, primarily why we do this is to eliminate the stiffness of that tip so that now we all we're left with is flowy marabou fibers that are just going to wiggle and squiggle in the water so I want a generous tail on this and so we're going to be tying that in so that it's roughly one and a half times the length of the overall hook and then I'll trim this about I don't know what that is two eye lengths uh, before I get to the red that way we can build up a little bit of a, a taper um, and have a little bit more consistency so we're saving our thread wraps for later and I'll just do some over unders here to kind of group that marabou in a nice clump and then I'll and then I'll just advance that up a couple wraps that way we know uh, we're going to be applying a little bit of flash there and it gives us a little bit of room to work with and so what I'm going to do here is grab off about three to four pieces of uh, gold crystal flash use uh, whatever color scheme you're going for uh, pearl and silver seem to be among some of my more popular colors as well and so I'll just uh, tie that in at the halfway point advance it kind of splitting it on each side of the tail that way we um, have those uh, kind of going down each side of the tail and we'll trim it roughly um, not quite the full length of the fibers because the tail tips there are really wispy I want those to form a nice taper and then we're going to start with the body by getting a nice generous dubbing loop here probably four to five inches and then we'll advance our thread up there to where we ended the marabou so um, for the body of this fly I'm going to use a material it's nothing new uh, it's a marabou flash uh, blend uh, snake river fly makes it and this is in their color olive uh, it's been a highly producing uh, uh, color for me and I, I really like this uh, pre-made marabou dubbing and so I'm just going to grab out a hefty clump of this I'm trying to uh, keep them aligned as best as I can then I'll just stack them so that we're not uh, tying in fibers that are folded in half and you know you're going to get just by doing this three four times you'll get uh, shoot 87% uh, of the fibers untrapped and nicely aligned and so then we'll insert that um, not quite in the middle I'm going to stack it so it's a little bit on the maybe four fifths uh, you know three eighths out the other end portions so that we 
um, have a little bit you were utilizing the length of the fibers and then I'll just go ahead and spin this up and allow it to uh, make a nice tight loop try to keep your tail out of it it's uh, not a big deal if you get a few fibers in there but um, it's a lot easier if you can keep those uh, and you can see that tail just wants to walk right in there uh, but that will be a nice transition I guess into the body and then we're gonna apply a little bit of uh, super glue down just to keep everything nice and bulletproof um, uh, I applied a little bit of a generous amount that way our dubbing loop is also integrated I try to start wrapping this while it's still wet and that way we're kind of making it all one uniform uh, durable uh, fly and whoops I fell off there but that's okay just grab it by the the end and that's why making the dubbing loop a little bit larger often is uh, beneficial and so that is um, not uncommon to happen just be ready for it and then we'll go ahead and palmer it around trying to wisp and fold most of our fibers going backwards but we'll brush this out afterwards once it's dry and we're just doing touching wraps. If your uh, dubbing loop is a little sparse, do them closer. If you got a really hefty clump, which I wouldn't recommend, um, you know, space that wrap out and uh, maybe brush it out before you start wrapping. But uh, we'll tie that off with some wraps behind, some wraps in front, and then we'll go, of course, trim out that dubbing loop uh, tag in and discard it. Now, grab your brush. I like a nylon brush uh, for these uh, marabou dubbing uh, flash uh, loops. Uh, tends to not to pull as many out um, and that glue is going to dry on um, the stainless steel wire brushes seem to be a little bit aggressive on it and so um, we'll go ahead and brush that out and try to get some of those fibers that might be trapped from us palmering it around out and then I'll just build up a little bit of a thread dam and we're going to be using some guinea here so I want to lay down a nice smooth underbody that that guinea is going to wrap nicely around and this fly we could fish it as is right now no I'm kidding we're going to finish it so um, this is Guinea. It's from Whiting Farms. I buy the uh, medium skin. This is uh, a really, really nice uh, uh, chartreuse uh, fluorescent yellow. I discard the package, and I'm not an expert at colors, but uh, it seems to really, really reflect and in, in pop in the water. And so we'll tie that in by the tip and then just pull that tip we tied in back. We'll just wrap it into the body. That's what I love about these poppers is it's something that you don't have to be as particular on your hackle wraps, but we're going to uh, palmer this around, uh, making sure that we are uh, stroking those fibers backwards. If you're more comfortable prepping your fiber by kind of bending those fibers back in the beginning, I just grab them and wrap them backwards and we're gonna get you know 95% of them uh, palmered the correct way. And I don't think when you're stripping this on the top water, a bass is going to look at it and say, hey, one of those fibers is oriented backwards. I don't think that's ever been the case. And so we'll just tie that off um, once we get that nice and wrapped. And notice how I ended right where that red is. That was kind of why we marked it. Red means stop. And I'll build up a little bit of a thread dam to orient those fibers going naturally backwards. I'll trim out the stem. And then we will go ahead and uh, wrap our way up towards the hook eye after um, uh, we're finished with this. And we'll, we'll lay down a generous amount. And I want to also build up a little bit of a thread dam right here at the hook eye. So go ahead and do about 20 or so wraps right on top of each other going up and down. Uh, that way if you just wrapped them on top of each other you would it could potentially slide. And so I kind of ramp it up as you can see with a nice taper and then we'll just uh, finish with a nice clean uh, three whip finish. And this is going to be covered in some uh, glue and resin and so we'll just do one single uh, whip finish and then we'll cut our thread out. So uh, that is pretty much the body of the fly and now um, we're going to spend just as much time getting the head on and getting it ready. So um, I'm going to color my thread wraps here being careful not to uh, color too much of that hook eye or color the hackle. If you do color the hackle a little bit that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, just color those thread wraps. If you're using red thread in the beginning, then um, you're set. But uh, you can also use some uh, orange or yellow. I just think that little red lip kind of helps, and it's a confidence thing for me. So uh, I'm going to just test this before we um, apply the glue just to make sure it still fits right. Um, that looks perfect to me. Uh, it's always good to test it rather than test it with glue on because once you start gluing, then you're um, in trouble. So if, for example, if it didn't work, then you could always add another feather. But I'm just going to lay down some of this super glue uh, gel. I like the gel because it gives you a little bit more time to work with. Um, if I wasn't going to be doing this video, I also use a product called uh, Liquid Fusion. 
Uh, the, the disadvantage to that is it takes, you know, overnight to dry in position. Um, I just like that because it's a little bit flexible, um, but I'll just go ahead and twist this head on. Um, if you push it back, you're going to push all the glue back into those feathers, and so I recommend the twisting. And then we'll make sure it's in the position we want it in, and that looks golden. Make sure you got that hook eye, and it is going to cure up nice and fast, and so you don't want to really adjust it too much. Otherwise, you ruin the bond that you're creating with that super glue. So... Um, you can fish this like this, but for me, I have confidence in adding um, eyes to it and uh, legs. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll finish with um, coating the whole um, head in a resin. That way we protect our investment on the eyes. And so uh, to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to take some wire here that I had laying around, and I'll just tie all these hackle fibers out of the way. This is mainly for if you're resining the head. And don't go too tight because you could potentially, uh, you know, bend the feather fibers. And so I'm just loosely wrapping this backwards. I'm keeping them out of the way and I'll just trim that out. Um, now that we got those out of the way, we're ready to have some fun with this head. And for the uh, eyes here, I'm going to be using some uh, Dead Meat Customs um, um, eyes. And I don't know the millimeters. They're, they're a pretty large eye. And all you got to do is uh, grab it. Oh, make sure you don't drop it. But what, what I do is I just use a bodkin, the same bodkin I use to puncture the um, popper head. And I just kind of get this adhesive tab off just by uh, almost scratching it. And then you can just pop it off real nice and easy. And then we will position these heads slightly downward, making it a little bit angry looking. Um, we're trying to mimic uh, the image that... Uh, Frankenfly hat on this, but uh, that looks pretty good. And so we'll do the same thing with the other side. Same process, just use your bodkin, get that adhesive back um, off. And if you're using, um, you know, eyes that come off a tab, it's a little bit easier. These are just a custom eye that I think uh, makes the fly look uh, a little bit better, a little bit more bass worthy. And so we'll position that in place. Now those are on with the adhesive that we um, used or that comes on the back of the eyes but we're going to um, get them a little bit more secure um, a little bit later now to puncture the legs through or this is just a, a sewing needle I'm going to heat it up and if you're um, not careful and you get this too hot it could burn you so I've got the other end in some pliers and that's what I would recommend and the key here is we're going to just go straight through so you want to position it where you want and then make sure you're aligned up going straight in all directions and then we'll just kind of slide that through and I would not put your finger on the other side where that's going to come out because it could potentially burn you and we did a pretty good job there I'll just insert it a little bit more and we're going to grab our legs now and for the legs we're just using some hot tip crazy legs these are yellow and uh, or yellow and fluorescent orange and I'm going to break off about four legs and uh, we'll just pull them off. I try to leave it on the tab. It makes it a little e easier right here to insert them into the needle eye. And then we'll just uh, oh, make sure that you don't drop it. Uh, that's another key thing. So luckily we have our tab still intact. And I'll just insert that up and in and then fold it back over itself. And then I just kind of push it through. If you need to, you can moisten that uh, to get it through. But I, I don't like to moisten it uh, because then we're... Uh, potentially adding water and when we're going to be resining these I don't want water on there and for some reason don't leave your crazy legs down around all your marabou as you can see we got a little bit of fibers in here uh, they seem to like to adhere to these uh, these uh, tab legs so I'll get them centered um, so that they're about equal on each side with these hawk tips if you're not using a hot tip uh, you can just align them and maybe even get two flies out of one length and for the um, outer coating, since we're going to be finishing this uh, right now and water testing it, I want to make sure we're going to use this flex resin. This is made by Raid Zap, and I'm just going to apply a generous coating on here. And uh, there's a couple different ways. I've used flexible epoxy. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you got a popper dryer for this or a tying wheel. And uh, if you're doing that, then we can use epoxies and all sorts of stuff. But right now we're just brushing it on, uh, trying to get it as even as possible. And just work your way around there. Just try not to get it into the hackle and into the hook eye. And so that's uh, all we're going to do there. And then I cure it up with my UV light. And for some reason, I struggle with this product uh, getting a full cure with a UV light. 
And so we'll, we'll take it out to the tying wheel um, and leave it in the sun for about 15 minutes or so um, after we're done with this. So I'll just trim the legs so they're uh, roughly, if I was to measure backwards to the hook bend or maybe a little bit further, and then I'll just make sure before we do a full cure out in the sun that these legs are kind of separated. If you did get a lot of resin on, um, just make sure the ends are open. Um, or you could tie them in a knot and just flare the ends like a, a foot. So, um, But those look pretty good to me. The last step here, we're going to get this uh, wire off. So just uh, untwist it and uh, get it out of there. And be a little bit careful because you don't want your fibers getting into this uh, slightly, uh, not tacky resin, but it's got a little bit of a adhesion to it and then um, all we're going to do is take it out um, and I'll place it in the sun on the tying wheel for about 20 minutes so make sure it's a nice sunny day it's about 45 40 degrees here so I don't I don't think the temperature matters as much as just the sun and so um, here we go I've got two on there and they just about 20 minutes and then they will be a full cure tack free um, fly and I've tested this all last summer, this uh, Raid Zap, and then you can just finger test it if it's got a little bit of a stickiness to it. Just leave it a little bit longer. But there we go. There it is swimming. Super, super awesome. Um, that's what it's going to look like in a, in a current. And, of course, if you're stripping it, you want it to splash and pop. So thanks for watching. Um, give these a try. It's a lot of fun in the summer months. So appreciate you guys and uh, have fun with it.